Right, if the machine is working, I'm with Constable Jean from St. John, which of course means he has a seat in the States, as we all know, so he has an all-island remit, really. And this is particularly about the the 12 constables, or the Committee de Conitab, as they call it. Why they don't call it constables, I do not know. But the Committee de Conitab, they meet in rotation every parish and discuss an agenda. And I went to the, I think it's number five this year, or of the current, since the new government went in, I think this was meeting number five. Uh, this week, this Monday, 9th of January. And I was very disappointed that improvements which I've suggested have not been implemented. And I was behind the scenes, Constable. What has been going on? Is there talk of improving the procedure for these, to make them public? They are public. Yeah, I think uh, we need to do two things, actually, Mike. We clearly need to uh, do something about the sound. Um, and we did have a discussion uh, after the meeting about how that could be done. And uh, we, we need to use technology that's available to us uh, and uh, do that quickly. Uh, and the other thing we need to do is to promote the meetings more widely because uh, I was personally disappointed that there was no uh, press release uh, advertising this meeting. Yes, it's advertised on our website, but who goes looking at our website exactly. to see when we meet? So I'm fairly confident that uh, the next meeting, which I think will be in St. Clement's. Uh, oh, my very own parish. Yeah, right. I'm very confident that it will be advertised and I'm sure that the constable there will be uh, trying to find a solution. Well, That's strangely sound. enough, my constable for St. Clement actually made me the uh, customary cup of tea. Now, I don't know whether you will, if 40 people turn up for the public, you'll make 40 cups of tea. But obviously, it's a little triviality. It's very nice. It's very hospitable. It shows good intent. And uh, I just wondered how it would have I was very upset. I mean, the previous one, I mean, I've missed four... Four out of five I have attended of the current run. And the one I missed, uh, an email came to me, which I didn't see until a Sunday, telling me that the next Monday there was a meeting. Well, I thought, well, they can't mean, they can't mean the next Monday tomorrow, but it was. So when I came a week later to go, they said, oh, that was last week. And there was no date. In other words, the invitation had no date on it. So, Well, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that because uh, our calendar is ready for the 12 months. Right. Uh, so uh, we go to St. Clement's. Uh, I think we then go to Greville, St. Martin, Trinity, and I think we're in St. John's in September and so on and so forth. So uh, if the calendar is not published, then I shall ask for it to be published. Right. Because there's no reason uh, to say when the meetings are going to take place. We know when they're going to take place. Right. And if there's an, some unforeseen reason that we have to postpone or reschedule, then that may be the case. But at the moment, we've got them in our diaries for the rest of the year. The... Uh the purpose of the committee, do you see that as a... Ah, is that me? I think it is. Oh, it's not, is it? <laughs> I'm either driving or I'm at a meeting. I hate the damn things. Where it is, I don't know where it is. Where is it gone? Let's turn this off. Yes, we had a slight technological interruption then of the 20... What, what year, century is it? 21st, are we? 21st, mm. right. Two, two, three, yeah, two, yeah. Anyway, what was your feeling after after that meeting? Because I had a little outburst at the end and I I said it was all very unsatisfactory. You discussed it or was that...? Yeah, we had discussed it, Mike, and I think uh, it was pointless people coming to the meeting if they can't hear what is being discussed. That right. uh, We are looking at ways of improving the sound. We're looking at ways of whether or not we can broadcast the meeting so that people who are working could actually play back the meeting if they were right. interested in the subject right. yeah. or subjects. So I think if we use uh, Teams uh, and or Facebook, uh, we could find ways of doing a cheap solution which would actually get uh, a wider audience. Yeah. I mean, we might be flogging a dead horse, but I'm working on the basis that there is a very vociferous group in Jersey in favour of constables. Now, if, if there isn't a group there which are interested in it, well, close the show down, that's what I say. Are, is there evidence that people want these meetings to take place at all? Well, I think uh, the meetings are, are useful, uh, an opportunity for us to discuss uh, common 
uh, challenges. It's also an opportunity for government departments to address the 12 constables at once. Um, so I do think that they're viable meetings. I do think they're useful. Um, and I, but I do think we should do more to promote them. And uh, when people come, they should be able to listen to what's being said. Well, the picture that was there of the Zoom, uh, the uh, it was Grooville, wasn't it? The, uh, yeah. the constable that was there absent, it, but he had the clearest voice, the clearest picture. It could have had uh, subtitles, that, which are possible, they could all be done, which would at least make it accessible to the public. Whether the public will actually take advantage, whether when it's live or subsequently, if they're published and available on the, the constable's website, if such a, collect, a collective one, it's no good doing, well, I don't think people are quite as insular as the constables think. I mean, all this loyalty to the parish is very nice, but I don't think it works like that, does it? Do you think it does? Well, I do think, uh, I do think there's still a huge amount of value in the parish system. Right. Uh, but we do need to look and think uh, broader. So I think uh, there are examples where we can do things, and we should be looking for solutions as opposed to reasons why we can't do things. So... I, I come with a very much a solutions-based uh, right. mindset. Uh, here in St John's, for example, we've managed to increase the turnout at parish assemblies uh, just by doing more advertising, both physical uh, letter drops and also using social media. And I'm pleased to say that our numbers have steadily increased and been maintained, um, and I hope to continue that. And uh, part of the offering that I do is when we close the meeting, I often have a question and answer session. So the assembly happens, comes to a close, uh, and then I'll try and answer questions. And I used to invite the parish deputy to join right. me on the stage for that. And it makes the makes it worthwhile coming out, actually. Do you invite the three parish deputies who might be affected now? Uh, we haven't done, but our next parish assembly is on the 8th of February. Make a note. 8th of February, um, <laughs> particularly if you live in St John's, uh, where we'll be electing a procurer, uh, a centenaire, uh, we have two ventineers and possibly a constable's officer. Um, I mean, that could be online itself, couldn't it? That that procedure. Yeah, it could, it could be. Um, you can now download uh, the nomination forms online, I'm pleased right, to say. Right, right. Um, so you don't need to come to the parish hall to get a nomination form. Right. So we are moving in, in the right direction. We St John's, for example, has got a full honorary police force uh, right. and 13 people who are on a waiting list to join the Honorary Police in St John. And that's been done through advertising, uh, social media, communication. And uh, when I arrived, we had six vacancies. So it can be done. That is a clear demonstration of the parish system working and um, the community coming together. Yeah. yeah. Well, as you know, my views on the parish system, I've never been involved in it. I, it's not, I think there has lots of merit to it, but it, from experience it doesn't work as far as I'm concerned. Yes, the, the, on the Monday's meeting you had a minister, the, Ian Gorst was there. Now that was in the private part of the meeting, so the public doesn't know what was discussing, but the 12 constables do, because they, if they were there, they, there was a couple missing, three missing I think, but basically it's a sort of a, a, presumably he wasn't talking about things in one particular parish, he was talking about all island issues. Now, again, the public ought to know what you're discussing, didn't they? Yeah, I, I'm i not sure uh, why that element of the meeting was in private. Um, there are areas which are freedom of information exempt, um, but I'm not sure uh, if, I, if I consider what we discussed. Uh, I don't think there was anything that we discussed that isn't in the public domain. So. We were talking about finances. Uh, all of the parishes now publish their accounts online. I think St John's right. was probably the last parish to publish their accounts right. online, uh, which was done within two weeks of me uh, taking office. Right. So, of course, you had had problems here, didn't you? There, there was particular issues with the previous constable, well, which upset the apple cart well, considerably. Well, I'd much prefer to look forward than backwards. Right. And um, but the AG's office was going to produce a set of. I don't know if they've ever done it, guidelines for procurers and people. Yeah, absolutely, they have done that. Have and they? Um, in October last year, I hosted, uh, because I was a procurer for eight years, Right. Uh, I hosted a training session here for all island procurers where we had people talking about data protection, human resources, 
uh, health and safety and property management. Right. And I think that should become a regular feature to give uh, procurers and constables uh, yeah. some continuous professional development. Because when we retire from business, uh, the world continues. Yeah. And if we were used to doing something one way, five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, the world has moved on since then. And we need to right. continually develop ourselves and make sure that we're up to date with legislation, etc. So, Well, that's, a, the, that's an aspect which I wish the constables, I wish the government generally, it's human rights. I wish that was on every agenda as well, because international obligations, including human rights, they have a sort of a subliminal presence. People say, oh, we want to do this and do that, but they don't say it's because there's a Vienna Convention on this or there's a so-and-so convention and this is required to do it. I wish they would add that to the agenda for discussion. Yeah, it's, it's a valid point. And, uh, you know, it's an area where a lot of us uh, would benefit from some additional training right. you know, and, and awareness because um, hopefully we make decisions which are compliant with that uh, practice uh, but we should be given more support and guidance in that area because it is, I'm certainly not an expert in human rights. No. Uh, I'd like to think that I've got a fair mind and uh, that I don't discriminate, but we should we should have more guidance in that, that area. Well, I'm interviewing you now because this is, a, for me, it's a sort of a follow-up. When I interviewed you last time, how long ago was it, 18 months? Uh, probably a year ago, yeah. Just yeah, a year ago. Yeah. It was impressive because obviously you were a constable who wanted to change things within the parish. So that was interesting. And now, having now attended these particular committee meetings, I'm so disappointed that there hasn't been that change at that level, which is a wonderful opportunity for the constables to engage with the public. Well, uh, with respect, Mike, I would say that the fact that you've been able to attend those meetings... Right. Perhaps we still have difficulty with the hearing, but the fact that you're able to attend those meetings demonstrates that there is change. Well, of course, that parish hall has still got several steps leading up to the entrance. You've got to get the ramp out if you're in a wheelchair. Which so parish hall? The, what was no, it? St. Saviour's. St. Saviour's, yeah, yes. Yeah. They, they haven't eliminated that. I mean, OK, it's nice, it's tradition to have nice granite steps, but it's not acceptable in the... Late in twenty first century, is it? Yeah, well, this pa this parish hall that you're sitting in today uh, became uh, accessible in twenty ten, uh, when uh, Constable Butcher was uh, in charge when we made the right. extension. Uh, so a lift was fitted to access the committee room. Disabled facilities were provided, and of course, you can access this parish hall uh, without using a ramp uh, from the back right. door. Yeah. Right. Well, of course, well, that's, an, that's a school of thought about accessibility yeah. and disability. So if I write in to the, the committee with a suggestion about discussing human rights, do you think that will be, again, a full discussion? Do you think it will raise interest amongst the constables? Uh, I'm sh I would like to think it would raise interest. Um, you know, there's lots of things that we should discuss, um, and it's about priorities and it's about time. Uh, we currently meet monthly. Right. Um, if we need to meet more frequently, then we should do that. Um, I mean, obviously, two, uh, 12 items on the agenda was too many for an hour. They couldn't be discussed in detail. I couldn't hear what was being discussed. I'd get little snippets from where I was sitting. But to discuss, I mean, the one on the green lanes, there was obviously a lot of technical stuff, a lot of legal stuff, which needed to be considered. And you couldn't do it within the 10 minutes or whatever you allowed yourselves. No, but we, what we did agree was to form a subcommittee, and that subcommittee will meet with Deputy Ward, uh, to discuss his proposal right. and try and get the uh, the spirit of what he's trying to achieve and understand the spirit of that and see what we can do uh, rather than saying no, no, no. And, um, and in in anticipate, would that possibly be an open meeting to the public or would that be private if you meet uh, Deputy Ward? Uh, I, I haven't given that any consideration and the, the subcommittee haven't met yet, but, um, it, you know, there are a lot of people interested and we have got... Uh, a number of our parishes, including St John, have got climate groups and right. uh, those meetings are uh, certainly St John's, which I can talk about. Right. Uh, the members of the climate group were elected uh, at a parish assembly. Um, we have done two supplements in the last three parish magazines 
talking about climate issues. Right. Um, and one of the areas that St John's wants to look at is transport. And Do you liaise, the, now it's set up, do you liaise with the other 11 parishes yeah, to again, make sure you're not well, again, doing the same research and coming up with the same answers? Absolutely. Different answers. Again, one of the things uh, when I arrived was I asked what the other five parishes who already had climate groups did together, and right. the answer was nothing. Right. So I set up a, an Ireland parish climate liaison group. Right. They meet on a quarterly basis. And the idea there is that we share uh, updates, uh, that we listen to speakers. Right. And again, Deputy Ward is due to be invited to the next meeting, which will be at the end of January. How does it work? Uh, Deputy Ward belongs to a politi- the yeah. major political party. If you've got your three deputies, because I'm very... I mean, it's, it's still new. The, the format of the government is still new. Down the line, if you've got a somebody who's strongly expressing the views of a party, how do you accommodate that within that parish level? The council, I mean, you can't disagree with them on policies, can you? Or can you? I suppose you can. Well, I, I honestly, on a personal level, I, I really don't care uh, who somebody's represented. No. It's about what their what their idea, what their suggestion is that we should be focused on. Right, you look at the issue rather than the... Uh... Absolutely, and I've said that in the States a number of times. You should put more focus on the content of a proposal than on who has bought the proposal. Because obviously that is a traditional way that, oh, it comes from that party, we'll, we'll not support it, we'll vote against it, because it, where it's come from, never mind what the merits are. Well, I, I, I would invite you to look at my voting record. OK. Yeah. I'm going to stop, but the uh, three and a bit years that are left of this tenure and the tenure for the States, do you think the constables will survive the next few years? Do you, in other words, do you think there will be constables will still have uh, access to the state's assembly in in three and a half years' time when there's the next election? Well, I certainly hope so. And uh, as the person that managed the option B campaign, which uh, was for retention of the constables, but going to larger districts. Uh, in St John's, option B got more votes than A and C combined. Right. So I certainly hope that uh, that is the case. I do think constables have got to evolve, uh, and I do think we are evolving. The very fact that we now have open meetings, albeit we've got teething problems, is, is a small step, but it is a step. I think we've got a lot more to do. I think it's about evolution, not revolution. Yeah. And I do think that um, opening up parish assemblies... Uh, promoting parish assemblies, even if you have gone from 10 or 12 people to 40 people, is a step in the right direction. Absolutely. And grassroots is where we need to get engagement. If we can get people involved at grassroots, we will see our uh, voter turnout turn up. And, and for example, the school, we're very fortunate here, the school was right next door to us. Right. Uh, this year, when the school came back in September, they elected a parish council. And to elect their parish council, we set up polling booths, the children came a class at a time. They right. voted as if they were going through a voting booth. Uh, they uh, had their votes counted by myself and one of the deputies, uh, two of the deputies, sorry, uh, and the the results were declared as who had been elected. So a small way of involving youngsters in the process and hopefully when they become old enough to vote, it'll be online, but... Nevertheless, they'll be familiar with the process. Right. And um, we get many people who come to the poll, or more importantly, don't come to the poll because they don't know what to do or how to do it. And we've got to make it easier. And by demonstrating to people the process, hopefully more will get involved. Right. I'm going to stop. There are lots and lots of questions I want to ask you. I have to thank you for the cup of tea. <laughs> so uh, that, that would be a good way of getting the public in to say tea is now being served. But... Uh, It's good to see you again. Uh, Nice to see you and thanks for your time.